Hey Jeff, so this is my FAF 545. You can see it looks um, just like yours pretty much. The only difference being um, the tension unit on the top because it's a uh, H3 model compared to the H4. But everything's identical. I thought I'd do a quick video, show you how to wind the bobbin on the bobbin winder, um, how to put the bobbin into the bobbin cap, um, how to insert that, and how to thread the machine real quick, and then um, if anything else comes to mind as I'm doing it, I'll, I'll throw that in as well. But uh, all right, so let's uh, get started on the bobbin winding. So this bobbin winder is going to look a little bit different than yours, but the, the function of it's exactly the same. Uh, you're going to take the thread either from the spool stand. Let me see if I can zoom in. Sorry, the lighting's not so great in here. Um, Take the spool, you take it from the spool stand, put it through this hole in the top, um, right in front of the, the tension disc, run it behind the tension disc, and then take it and route it through the slit in the bobbin. So you're going to run it from the inside out. Yeah. Put that in there, all right. And then you're gonna take it, slide it onto the, to the, to the winder. Lift up your presser foot on the machine so it doesn't thump as you're uh, going. You're gonna push the uh, thing in and then just so. So. Give it about two passes and then either that'll, it'll break off or you can cut it and then you just keep winding. I'm not gonna wind this whole bobbin, but it should disengage. Uh, if you're finding that it's not disengaging or that it's overfilling or underfilling, you can adjust it with that screw right there. Um, you turn the screw in and it will allow more thread and you turn it out or counterclockwise and it will allow less thread. So grab a pair of scissors, snip that off and then disengage the bobbin. So let me zoom back out for you. All right, and uh, okay, so now you're gonna take the bobbin case out of the machine, or this bobbin cap. Basically, you're gonna flip that lever up, pull the cap out, and what you're gonna wanna do is you want the thread, the rotation of the um, of the uh, actual bobbin to go clockwise. And what you're going to do is, let's see if you can get it to focus. You're going to pull the thread through that little groove there. And you'll see it on yours. It looks just the same, just a little bit smaller version. So you pull it through that groove all the way up. And you want it to, if you look on yours... It's the same as this, where there's a little notch or a little hole. Sorry, it's, it's not focusing. Is Anyway, so you're going to pull it, and you're going to bring that over the top. So when you pull on the thread, you want that bobbin to rotate clockwise. And then take it. too dark. Let me see if I can put a light on it. I brought a light in here in case if that helps. Okay, so lift up the lever, drop the bobbin cap and bobbin in, and you want that thread to come up um, in between. It kind of clamps together and you see a little recess, a little hole there. So go ahead and flip that down and then you can kind of close that part way. You don't need to close it all the way. And then to thread it, it's exactly the same procedure on yours. You're gonna you're going to grab grab it from the spool stand, route it just through one of these guides is fine. You don't need to do two. Um, just the one that gives you the straightest path to the tension assembly here. So it's kind of hard to see it here. So back to front, then you're going to go here, and I'm going to zoom in so you can... Sorry about this lighting, it's terrible. 
Should have brought it back into the garage. But uh, so you're gonna go in through the hole here on the side, up over the top of this disc thing, and there's little discs, little under spring tension. So you're gonna go underneath it, over the top, around it, and then you're gonna go basically. You want to go cl uh, clockwise through the tension discs. So. So go clockwise through the tension disc, and you want to make sure that they actually pull all the way in and get tight um, and touch the uh, the center. Then you're going to go underneath, up, and you want it to click so that you see that the, the thread should be trapped in that little hook area there, and then you have the um, check spring pulling down on it. Now you can see I just pulled that, there's a little knot in the thread. Anyway, okay, so there, there you're good. We're good. So now you're going to go through the uh, guide there into the take up lever, down through that guide, another guide here, go through the needle bar guide, and then you're going to thread it. Uh, you're going to thread it left to right if I can see to do it sorry hopefully that light isn't blowing the uh, image out um, okay and then you raise up the presser foot and you'll see the hook catch so then you hold the tail do one revolution and it will catch and you'll see it and then just pull it up and you'll have both ready to go. Now, let me grab a scrap. I'll do a quick... So... Move that light. So, you go ahead and you drop the knee. Or drop the... Uh, so this is cotton and the thread in this in this machine is the T40 thread so it's a it's a lighter weight thread and this is a smaller needle but I just want to show you what it can do with uh, co the cotton here you can see it feeds it fine it doesn't scrunch it up or anything um, and the thread and that the stitches are balanced okay now when you get to the edge of when you get to the end of this of your stitching go ahead and raise Turn the hand wheel so that the um, take up lever is at the highest position and take your piece out. And you're gonna to get some um, length on the thread to get some uh, extra thread here because everything's under high tension. Grab the thread to the right side of the take up lever and just pull it through, um, pull it through the uh, tension discs. And then when you do that, when you go to lift it up, you'll have uh, additional um, thread to pull out. So you'll have some slack in that thread so you can take it out of the machine. So here, I'll, I'll do it one more time. So start sewing, you get to the end of the run, raise the take-up lever all the way to the top, grab the thread to the right of the take-up lever, pull it just a little bit and so you have some uh, slack there and then pull it out pull the piece out and cut it okay the other thing also I want to um, show you on the back of the machine uh, so the alternating feet so the stroke the stroke of the alternating foot how high and low it goes is adjusted via this um, lever here or this uh, wing nut and what you're going to do is you loosen the wing nut and if you raise it then you'll have a really high alternating feed stroke and if you lower it you'll have a low one so if you're going through really flat material with consistent thickness put it on the lowest setting if you're going through material that changes in thickness dramatically put it on a higher setting you can go anywhere in between um, whatever you need depends on your uh, situation the other thing about it too I, I threaded and, <clears throat> and ta I tapped the machine to accept this roller guide um, I'll give you the link uh, in the email where you can buy this if this is something you're interested in getting. Um, 
it's pretty good. So it comes with a roller bearing here, but it also comes with a flat guide. Uh, let's see if it's. I'll pull it out here. Sorry, put the camera down. Uh, and that's it's super helpful on projects. So it looks just like this, and you just loosen that Allen bolt put it on and it goes in its place and you can adjust it all the way in. So I'll give you the link to the one that you want. It's about $30 and then an additional um, 30 to have it shipped, but they also sell some feet and stuff. So you can uh, get that while you're at it and then you can just flip it up out of the way. And the great thing about the roller guide is if you're, if you're doing, um, doing really like curved pieces, it's easy to go around and, and track and get a consistent, um, uh, stitch length from the edge and and that just bolts into the back you'll see it behind um, where that bolts in and uh, I think that's pretty much it if you have any questions of course you can always drop me an email um, but that's how to thread it and wind the bobbin and load it so uh, anything else if you have any other questions drop me an email and I'll, I'll help you out all right thanks again Jeff hope you enjoy the machine